What do you do if you capture a jihadi who's trying to join ISIS, but he starts acting really, really nice and friendly once you put him in prison? Well, if you're any nation in Europe, you release him back into the public. What could go wrong? The Wall Street Journal reports. The suspected gunman in an attack that left four dead in Vienna was a 20-year-old Austrian who had been convicted on terrorism charges last year but was released from prison after serving part of his term, authorities said Tuesday. The suspect, Kuchtim Fedjulai, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, so I'll just call him the Vienna Sausage. The Vienna Sausage, armed with an assault rifle, handguns, and a machete, opened fire on passersby and people enjoying a last night out Monday before Austria's coronavirus lockdown came into effect. Two men and two women died, and 14 people were rushed to the hospital, with six in critical condition. After initially warning that several people could have carried out the attack, Interior Minister Karl Niehammer told a news conference the suspect appeared to have acted alone. The Vienna sausage was shot dead by police minutes after the beginning of the assault. Police arrested 14 people with links to the suspect and raided 18 apartments in and around Vienna, seizing large amounts of material that investigators were poring over, the minister said. Police were also sorting through some 20,000 videos of the attack sent by witnesses, he said. Mr. Niehammer said the Vienna sausage was being considered without a doubt a disciple of the radical Islamist terror militia Islamic State. How did the authorities in Austria know that this terrorist was a disciple of the Islamic State? Because he was captured while trying to join the Islamic State. He said police found overwhelming evidence that the suspect, despite outwardly giving the impression that he was integrated and de-radicalized, was a follower of radical Islamist ideology. The Vienna Sausage had posted a photo of himself on social media with the weapons he used in the attack, accompanied by typical ISIS messages, Mr. Niehammer said. Two things here. One, here's the picture. Seems perfectly peaceful, just like his religion. Two, look at this. Despite outwardly giving the impression that he was integrated and de-radicalized, he was a follower of radical Islamist ideology. Outwardly, he was friendly. Inwardly, he supported ISIS. If you've been following my videos for a while, that should sound awfully familiar, because it's taken straight from the pages of Islam's most trusted sources. In Surah 3, verse 28 of the Quran, we read, let not the believers take disbelievers for their friends in preference to believers. Whoso doeth that hath no connection with Allah, unless it be that ye but guard yourselves against them, taking, as it were, security. Allah biddeth you beware only of himself, unto Allah is the journeying. What does Allah mean when he orders Muslims not to take unbelievers as friends, unless it's to guard themselves against the unbelievers? Let's read the commentary of Ibn Kathir. The Prohibition of Supporting the Disbelievers Allah prohibited his believing servants from becoming supporters of the disbelievers or to take them as comrades with whom they develop friendships, no friendships allowed, rather than the believers. Allah warned against such behavior when he said, and whoever does that will never be helped by Allah in any way, meaning whoever commits this act that Allah has prohibited, namely being friends with unbelievers, then Allah will discard him. Similarly, Allah said, O you who believe, take not my enemies and your enemies as friends, showing affection towards them, until, and whosoever of you does that, then indeed he has gone astray from the straight path. Surah 60, verse 1. Allah said, O you who believe, take not for friends disbelievers instead of believers. Do you wish to offer Allah a manifest proof against yourselves? Surah 4, verse 144. And, O you who believe, take not the Jews and the Christians as friends. They are but friends of each other. No friendships with Jews or Christians. And whoever befriends them, then surely he is one of them. 
If you take a Jew or a Christian as a friend, then you're a Jew or a Christian, not a Muslim. Surah 5, verse 51. Allah said, after mentioning the fact that the faithful believers gave their support to the faithful believers among the Muhajirin, Ansar, and Bedouins, and those who disbelieve are allies of one another, and if you do not behave the same, there will be fitna and oppression on the earth and a great mischief and corruption. Surah 8, verse 73. Allah said next, and here's the most relevant part, unless you indeed fear a danger from them, meaning except those believers who, in some areas or times, fear for their safety from the disbelievers. So, if you're a Muslim who gets arrested on terrorism charges and you're under the power of a non-Muslim government, this applies to you. In this case, such believers are allowed to show friendship to the disbelievers outwardly, but never inwardly. For instance, al-Bukhari recorded that Abu Darda said, We smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. Al-Bukhari said that al-Hasan said, The tukya, i.e. tukiya, is allowed until the day of resurrection. Notice, if the non-Muslims are more powerful than you, then you smile in their faces while cursing them in your heart. Recall yesterday's video about jihad of the hand, jihad of the tongue, and jihad of the heart. You show friendship to the unbelievers outwardly, but never inwardly. What did the Vienna sausage do? Despite outwardly giving the impression that he was integrated and de-radicalized, he was inwardly a follower of radical Islamist ideology. Shocker! He's doing exactly what he's commanded to do in Islam's most trusted sources. If only we had complete access to their sources so that we could understand fully what's going on. News of the suspect's past conviction is likely to rekindle a simmering debate in Europe about the comparatively short prison sentences for some terrorism convictions and what to do with radicalized convicts who have served their terms. The Vienna Sausage, born to ethnic Albanians from North Macedonia, was sentenced to 22 months in prison in April 2019 for trying to travel to Syria to join Islamic State, Mr. Nehammer said. But he was released early because he was young and showed good behavior. He showed good behavior outwardly, but not inwardly. He smiled in their faces while cursing them in his heart. He waged jihad of the heart until they released him, then he waged jihad of the hand. Mr. Nehammer said the Vienna sausage, who had Austrian and North Macedonian citizenship, managed to deceive authorities and de-radicalization programs, exposing a gap in Austria's system of dealing with extremists that should be reviewed. Exploiting the gaps in your programs. That could be Islam's new catchphrase. I'm sure everyone acted to their best knowledge, but the fact is that a terrorist managed to deceive and obtain an early release, said Mr. Nehammer. Because he was so perfidious in tricking the system, we also didn't have any warnings. Let me get this straight, Mr. Nehammer. The Vienna Sausage tried to join ISIS, and once you captured him, he started doing exactly what his sources tell him to do when he's under the control of a more powerful adversary. But you didn't have any warnings. Because it's not like we've been warning you for years, as politicians and journalists called us Islamophobes and racists and bigots for the heinous crime of being able to read words off a page. Guess what, Europe? A lot of people who tried to join ISIS were captured and put in prison. A lot of people who joined and fought for ISIS eventually returned to Europe and were put in prison. And a lot of them got two-year, five-year, or ten-year sentences. So now they're starting to be released back into society. Have you noticed a recent uptick in European terrorist attacks? Do you think it's over, or is it just getting started?